Hey there, Betty. Hello, and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right, so today we are talking about discomfort and making a case for actually it being a good thing to have in your life. Hey there, everybody. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right, so we're talking about comforts, or more specifically, discomforts. Uh, we as humans, we love our creature comforts. We spend millions of dollars on beds and pillows, and I'm and the the industry of making sure that you are comfortable is is a uh, is a growing growing industry. But I actually want to make it a, a statement and a case for quite the opposite. I want to say that you need to get out and actually start becoming uncomfortable with, uh, with things from time to time, once a week or even daily. Uh, who was it? Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, I believe, has actually told us to do one thing each day that scares us. Being scared is very uncomfortable, but it's definitely something that you need to have in your life. Uh, on a semi-regular basis. The reason why you want to to be dis is uncomfortable is because we as humans are designed to only grow when we're in discomfort. Look at uh, when you were young and you were you just hit puberty and all of a sudden you went from being this tall to you know this tall. That overnight transformation from here to here was not a comfortable thing. For me, whenever I was growing up, my knees hurt. That because of my uh, and had all those growing pains and 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 I, all that that happens to your body as it stretches out and becomes this more adult form of you. When we take the when we take ourselves out of our comfort zones and we are so stuck in our comfort zones, believe me, I am now pushing myself to get out because if I had my choice, I would want to be just behind a computer with the air conditioner blowing on me, just typing away, writing blog posts. That's not going to do me any good. I have to step out of my comfort zone. I have to, and you do too. We have to do stuff that we don't want to do. Being comfortable is got so many of its perks and there's a reason why those perks and why comfort is such a, such a big item for us to actually follow. I want to go ahead and start off with what is comfort? Why, why is it that com we are so driven by uh, comfortable things when being uncomfortable is better for us? Well, it all it's, if you are an evolutionist, um, there is this little, I believe it's uh, about the size of a walnut or it's an almond shaped. It's some type of nut, some type of nut loose in your brain. <laughs> so um, there, anyhow, it's called the uh, amygdala. The, often a lot of people call this the reptile brain. Now, when you look at uh, the reptile brain, its whole job is to look and see what's happening around uh, in, the, uh, in the area and identify potential problems, potential danger zones, because its whole purpose is to keep you alive. It's like, oh my gosh, we got to stay away from the dark cave because there might be a cat in there that's going to eat you. Or uh, we got to be careful of height because that sudden stop at the end is really, really bad. So we want to make sure that we are comfortable and the way that we, and our amygdala actually tells us, hey dude, you're safe here. Uh, we know we're in our home. You're not going to get hurt being in your home. You're safe. You're okay. You're, you can. You're, I'm gonna. I want to rest. So we're gonna let the guard down for a bit. We want to be comfortable. Being comfortable is actually a very good thing in our reptile brain's line of thinking. So when you uh, go and you stand in front of a, an audience, all of a sudden you've got you know. If there's a hundred people, there's two hundred eyes looking all of a sudden turned at you and looking at you and wondering what you're going to do and say, and all of a sudden, you know, your your reptile brain's going, 
we're eating, we're going to be eating, we're, oh my God, we're going to end, and wants to panic, and that's why you get this, uh, anxieties, and, and your stomach gets tied up in knots, and your, your throat gets dry, and, and, and you start sweating profusely, and all this other stuff, that's because, those are signs of, of stress, and that's because you're fixing to be doing something that is uncomfortable, but what happens once you get finished with that actual talk? A lot of great things happen. If you're a speaker, that means you may have some more sales. You may get an increase in customers. If you are um, doing a presentation, that means you're looking a little more favorable in the boss. You're tell you've told the boss, hey, these are some good items. The boss is going to be happy with you. And more better chance that you might actually actually make it up the, uh, the corporate ladder. There's a lot of different uh, benefits to getting uncomfortable because you decided, hey, I am going to stand up here and I am going to give a presentation. Comfort is also very low energy. It's very efficient. Your brain doesn't have to think that much. It's able to run on autopilot. You know, you're able to just stand and or sit and watch a movie, watch Netflix, and just let it go from one episode to the next. And you don't have to sit there and you don't have to think about, well, what am I going to go watch next now that that episode's over? You've got a whole series, uh, you, you've taken a whole series of, of discussions and thoughts and, and, and energy burning equations and anything else that might be, your brain might not want to have to do, and relegates it to just the least energy burning uh, production that it can do. So when you're comfortable, you're not wanting to actually take the time to do the hard things. You would rather, you're not going to do what is needed in your life. You're not going to do what, uh, what will be better for you. Um, if you are actually, but if you step into the area of discomfort, you're able to do a lot more. You are become a whole lot more aware. You, uh, of what's happening in your, in your area, you are able to see things that are needing to be done, when you actually go through and you do the hard things, there's a few items that happen. One, you become a better leader when you are, when you actually go through and do the hard stuff. You actually take the time to understand what, uh, getting yourself out, out of your comfort zone has a lot of different effects. It's a lot like, uh, no, I've used this analogy several times, and it's still one of the best fitting ones. It's when you like when you go to exercise. What happens when you exercise, for the, especially for the first first time? Several times after that, actually, um, you go, you push yourself to the limit. You're breaking, you're you're doing push-ups and chin-ups, and you're you're lifting weights, and you're you know you're breaking a sweat. You're you when you get done, your arms feel like jelly. Your legs are are, are all sorts of gooey and you go home and you are beat, you're exhausted, you have done something that you're, you just, you've been saying you wanted to do for a long time. You finally went out, you finally started lifting weights and getting to the gym and working yourself out. And what happens the next day? You are all sorts of sore. There is a lot of discomfort there. That discomfort though is actually a good thing. You're actually, the reason why it's you're uncomfortable and your muscles hurt and they're sore is because you have actually taken the time to stress your muscles until they have actually ripped. You've actually ripped the very muscle fibers themselves. And when you t rip the muscle fibers, you're actually breaking them down. Your body goes, oh, well, that's destroyed and has to take everything out. And be taking it out, you actually, uh, that process of, of breaking those muscles down is actually very sore and very because uh, you have what's called I, b I believe it's called lactic acid. But we'll we'll just go with that. Anyhow, you have a you have your body releases chemicals to help break down those muscles, and those muscles being broke down, like I said, generates the be, being sore. Now, if you were actually were to uh, to wait a bit. Those broke down muscles, your body likes to make sure that it doesn't get that way again. So what happens is it adds it adds more to it. So it builds those muscles back. It gives you more those muscle fibers, and then it goes, all right. So we don't have that problem again. Let's add some more. And so they'll actually build your muscles up and make you stronger because you have taken the time to break the muscles down. 
So that whole si type of, of thought can be applied to, to your normal life. If you go off and you do something that you do, that uh, that is hard, you're actually doing something that nobody else actually even wants to do. So that is, you're actually doing the things that nobody else does, which allows you to get further ahead than the other people. Your success or anybody's success is actually dependent upon what other people don't do. And if you actually do something that uh, nobody else is doing, you're actually going to incur their admiration because they really do wish they were to go off and, you know, stay up till three o'clock in the morning working on, on, uh, on landing pages. They were able to. So when you are, when you go off, you get uncomfortable. You're actually also doing the hard stuff. You're doing what you need to do to be able to make yourself better down the road. One of the awesome side effects of doing the hard things, though, is you also get to have stories. You make some of the most incredible stories of the times of strife. Listen to anybody. Listen to the uh, listen to the the Dwayne the dwindling number of World War II vets. Listen to what they have to say. Listen to what they have to say. They will they would love to tell the stories of all those hard times that they faced while they were going against the Germans or the, the Japanese uh, in, in World War II. Talk about uh, the Korean War and how the, uh, uh, talk to the Korean War veterans and listen to what their stories are. And their stories are just as harrowing as the World War II's. Um, same goes with the Vietnam vets, the uh, Persian Gulf vets, uh, and uh, even uh, the, the vets who have been in Afghanistan and Syria. Uh, any, any time our boys go overseas, if you get a chance to sit down and actually talk with them and they're in, in the frame of mind to want to talk, listen to those stories and listen to what they went through and understand exactly how cool they are and how badass they really can be because they have actually taken the time to do the hard things. Look at uh, another thing that uh, discomfort actually helps you with is actually bonding with other people. When you have gone through something rough, and I'm going to use the military as an example again, uh, you actually build a bond with those people who went through the exact same instance and exact same experience as to what you went through. Uh, boot camp is a beautiful example of this. Boot camp sucks. I will tell you that. I, of course, I only did the Navy boot camp, which is all right it's it's definitely tough but i mean it's not it's not uh not marines uh, boot camp or anything like that because the whole marine uh the whole navy uh uh the whole thing with uh in the navy where we get sleep deprived is when we're in the in the kitchen so <laughs> yeah we we have it rough but we ain't, uh, i mean we're we're tougher than what the what air force was but you know no we're you, you get the bullet sponges out there, and they're they're a lot tougher than what I would ever be. When you go through boot camp, you and the rest of the people that are in your group have a have a stand uh, have an understanding. By the time you're finished, you're like, "Holy crow, what did we just do? Where did I? What happened here?" And um, you are uh, you will become a, a in a way a band of brothers. You are. You understand your uh, what happened with uh, you understand what you went through. You become stronger because of the experiences you went with, and your bond with the other people. Even though you may start out with a with a, a most annoying person ever, uh, there were several people who I uh, started boot camp out with, and they were just the most annoying SOBs you had ever come across. And by the time we had finished going. So by the time we finished going through everything that we went through in, in our basic training, stepped out of there, I had a lot more friends. I had a lot more, uh, lot more understanding for other people. And so we become, you become closer when you experience tough uh, experiences with other people. Uh, that's one of the reasons why being with a mastermind is such a great, uh, great experience because they help you, uh, they help you go through the tough things. They push you and they uh, and and help you to become a, a better a better person, 
They make sure that you do the uncomfortable thing. They make sure that you do the things that you really don't care to do. You would rather sit down and watch Netflix and, and, and enjoy the latest episode of Stranger Things. But, you know, it's not going to be the, uh, be the inst you're not going to get the tough things done watching Stranger, Stranger Things. You're not going to get the, uh, you're not going to want to do you're not going to do the things that need to be done. You're not going to do what needs, what is required of you nearly as much unless you have someone, an accountability partner. You have a group of people who are standing there going, well, why didn't you do what you said you were going to do? Now, you can actually take the time and be uncomfortable and learn that you're able to, to do the things that you didn't think you, it was possible. And that's the last thing about being uncomfortable. You learn a lot more about yourself. You understand that your decisions uh, are important. You don't understand that there is something deep down inside of you that you never knew was actually possible. It takes a little while. It takes some gumption. It takes some strife. But always you come out on the other side a better person. You become out stronger and you become out, uh, you come out as a, as a person who can can win uh, battles you never thought were possible. So this week I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to actually take, make a goal. Find someone who you want to hold accountable. Say you uh, are you a smoker, you want to quit smoking, you can actually do that. It's tough. It hurt. It's uncomfortable. You're wanting to chew nails, bite chain, and, and spit out nails. You There's so much that is unpleasant about quitting smoking. While it's just easier just to say, oh, screw it, I'm just going to enjoy the cigarette. But if you take the time and you actually get out uh, of the habit of smoking, you find that all of a sudden you walk outside and there's this wonderful smell out there. What is that? And all of a sudden you realize, oh, smoking had been killing my sense of smell. You realize that, holy smokes, I've, there's a lot more to life than I never thought of. And I am able to breathe deeper. That annoying cough has finally gone away. There's so much to this. And I'm so glad I was able to do it. So take the time. Take, stop, figure out something that you want to quit doing. And, and stop doing it. <laughs> it's, take the steps into, do, into doing that uncomfortable thing that one thing you've been meaning to do but you just really don't care to do because well who's got time for that I've, I, there's Netflix is happening man. come on man there's you know the Avengers is out you know you've got all these excuses which are just lies that you tell yourself so get out and try doing something uncomfortable and then share with me what it, that uncomfortable uh, that uncomfortable event is and I'd like to help you out and see if we can get you to to become the better, stronger, more awesome person that you already are. So anyhow, folks, I'm Brian. I want to thank you very much for taking the time. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you happen to like the whole channel, then please click that subscribe button. And on top of that, hit that little bell icon, and I'll it can even uh, I'll then let you know every time I put a new video out, which is all typically around uh, Friday about nine o'clock, but. It's not always, but I do like to, uh, from time to time, put out little special videos. Um, so I want to thank you very much for this, uh, taking the time to listen to me gab about what discomfort is as I sit here and as I melt. <laughs> so anyhow, folks, have a great week. I will see you next week. Until then, be awesome.